I read some more celebrity books, so here are my thoughts about these ones. Hey y'all, if you're new here, my name is BB Queen, and today I'm gonna be ranking these popular celebrity books ranging from Alicia Keys to Kamala Harris and Stacey Abrams. So in this video, I wanna tell you what to expect from each book, and then if you stick around to the end, you'll be able to see my ranking of these books. So first, we're gonna start with Stacey Abrams' Lead from the Outside. Now, most of these books I actually read on my iPads, that's why I'm not holding them but I read this book during the most recent election because Stacy was attempting to get elected in Georgia again. This book came to my attention and wow I feel like it should get more attention. Stacy is really that it girl and I feel like she doesn't get enough credit for it because one she's very involved in the political arena that is for sure but also she does so many other things that we just don't know about slash she doesn't talk about slash like she just does everything. She owns a few companies with a few of her friends and then she also writes um non fiction books you know from her POV Leave from the Outside is one of them but she also writes romance novels under a pen name I'm not a crazy romance reader although I have been reading more rom-com like books lately so if you want me to talk about those let me know in the comments I would have never expected Stacey Abrams to do that so anyway in this book Leave from the Outside she talks a lot about how minorities specifically can become leaders even if they aren't in the rooms. And I feel like this is such a unique perspective that only she can really speak to because if you know anything about Stacey Abrams, she ran for governor for a second time in 2022. So in the previous race, she had lost and by crazy circumstances. But anyway, in her book, she talks about that specific loss and also what she did to be able to run again and also how she used her agency at that point. So not being in office to then do the work that she wanted to do. And without giving away anything that happened in the story, one of the things that she talks about is making friends with staff members so a lot of times when you are a person a minority of high leadership you don't always hear or know what is going on with the other people that work with you and that was what was happening with her the custodian who was also black was in the room changing the trash can taking out the trash and because they're custodian, no one really notices them, but they overheard Stacey's coworkers talking about her and started giving her the tea. Uh, she talks a lot about how you can use your agency, use your voice in a variety of ways. The only thing I didn't like about this book was that she says minority, where a lot of the things she's talking about are actually for black people. I think there's a much bigger conversation needs to have about word choice. However, the book was written long before we started to have these conversations. So I can understand why she did use the term minority, but in some cases, I think it actually should be black people. Anyway, it's a great book. You should definitely read it. Let's go on to the next one. Next is Alicia Keys, More Myself. So Alicia Keys has been under the radar in terms of music for a long time. At least like I haven't really heard a lot from her. I'm a huge fan of her music. I love her album Diary. Like what come on girl give it to us give it to us anyway in this book she talks a lot about her upbringing and i was totally engulfed in this book like reading about her from her perspective i didn't know that she had actually gotten her first record deal when she was 16 years old but she didn't come out with her first album until 19 and that's because the first record label that she signed with didn't allow her to make the music that she wanted to make and she ended up re-signing with a different record label who gave her more agency and more freedom over her work and a lot of her story is actually intertwined in that which is at the very start of the book she talks a lot about her music you know each single each song she talks about meeting swiss beats and what's funny is that she actually did not like him when they first met she actually hated Hated him for a long time <laughs> and I think that's so funny because they're now like such as happy like go lucky family but she literally could not stand him when they first met she talks about her no makeup error and when that came from I honestly feel like she could have not talked about that the entire book and I would have liked her to not have talked about it well I guess I didn't really resonate with it online when it was actually happening because it seemed like people were saying that you shouldn't wear makeup that's how i interpreted it but in the book she talks about it was really her freeing herself from the hounds of society and from uh expectations of society and how women should look and how women should dress and yada yada either way i didn't really like that chapter in the book i did like the whole book it wasn't until the very end that I realized this book is actually co-authored. Co-authored with Michelle Burford. A lot of celebrity books are 
co-authored although or have ghost writers although they don't put their names on the front so that does change my perspective a little bit of the book however the writing is so well thought out like this is really great writing so whether or not she wrote the entire thing or michelle wrote or whoever whoever had a part in whatever chapter the writing was really really good so i did like this book it was much more than i was expecting i didn't really know what to expect though so any i was just pleasantly surprised by this book it was really great i liked it okay moving on to taraji p henson with around the way girl the water break so Taraji wrote this book a long time ago. I had a hard copy. I have no idea where it went. I think I got lost in the move. I have no idea where my book went. But I did read the book. I do have my notes and I do remember what happens. Taraji P. Henson is DC born and raised and not like the Stacey Abrams part of DC that we see all the time. No, no, no. She's from the DC, like the D DC, you know? She talks a lot about her upbringing, but her main story starts at Howard. And that's what she really talks about, like how she felt connected with the school, the students, the teachers all of it and how she was just like so wrapped up in the Howard world and I have never been to Howard <gasps> never stepped foot on an HBCU campus to be completely and totally honest like I went to PWIs and I've never been to a homecoming either but that really starts her journey into acting and what's unique about her story trigger warning trigger warning trigger warning is that she talks about her first relationship with her father's son that was abusive and this is another story like Gabrielle Union where she goes into detail about what happened and how she got out of it and then how she really took her career by reins and really put all of her energy and effort in her career but I think her story is different in that she had a son she had a son pretty young so that really Really impacted her and her drive and how she was trying to make a way for herself in acting. One of Taraji's favorite roles for me is Hidden Figures. I saw the movie after I read the book, so I read the book a long time ago. One thing I felt like was missing was Taraji today. I mean, granted, I read this book a long time ago, but I felt like it was like really focused on the past and not more so of who she is now, again, at the time that it was published. And I just love her spirit. I think she's really great. She really gives a full perspective of growing up in DC and I think that's something that people need to read because whenever we typically hear about DC it's under like the political gaze and that's not really what it is and she gives a crazy twist to it and I really really like that so that was a good book and you're gonna have to wait until the end of this video to hear how I ranked it next up we have what I know for sure by Oprah Winfrey out of this list this one is not a memoir but I wanted to include it because I think it is somewhat close to a memoir it's actually a book of essays and it's taken from different diary entries of Oprah's journal. I think it's so cool. Like, when are we ever going to be able to read the thoughts of Oprah as she's living them? Almost never. I read this book again on my iPad, but this book really held with me because a lot of her thoughts are a lot of the thoughts that we hear and that we think every single day. At least what I think every single day. Of, Am I making the right decisions? Like, is this the right path for me? Or... You know, does this person have the best intentions for me? What's interesting about these essays and these uh, journal entries is that she also does a lot of reflection as well. So even though she's wondering if she's making the right decisions or if she, the people around her are the best people, et cetera, et cetera, she will then go back and be like, actually, they were okay. You know, actually, like I, I did have the right feeling. Actually, it was right for me to go with my intuition. It's a very different book and typical memoir than your typical biography. Oprah does have a biography. I have not read it. I like the what I know for sure. I like this a lot. I was very surprised by it. It's a very short read, so it does not take you long. It's something that you should read like once per night, you know, like read a couple essays before you go to bed. But because she is Oprah, that is what really hit home for me of like, oh wow, Oprah has these thoughts too. So maybe I'm not crazy. That was a surprisingly really good book. The last book I want to talk about today is The Truths We Hold by Madam VP Kamala Harris. Any lecture was going on, I asked for this book. I begged for this book for Christmas. I begged for this book for Christmas and I still have no idea where it is. I think I actually did lose books when I moved. Anyway, I wanted to know about Kamala Harris. She is the first woman VP. She's also the first black woman in office in the White House. Like, uh, just like, just conceptualize that for a second. 
What really stuck out to me is that Kamala Harris talks about her work as a senator in California and programs that she implemented when she was in her senator role. Her claim to fame or her most uh, prevalent program is her prisoner reform program. And if you are unfamiliar, essentially a lot of people that have been imprisoned end up being imprisoned again, even after getting out of prison the first time because there just aren't any resources and ways to educate cons. Like there isn't a system set up for them and our judicial system as it is set up is not for people to really succeed or to reform in any sort of way so Kamala Harris wanted to change that and implemented this uh, prisoner reform program which had a huge huge success rate and I didn't know that about her I thought that was really interesting she also talks about how she met her current partner and I'm not gonna give away that story but she also was like super uninterested in being in a relationship she was like I want my career and that's that I respect that like I respect the working woman so i really resonate with this story i like this book a lot i wish it had a different cover I, I do i'm sorry like i do like when people have childhood covers but I just didn't like this one <laughs> time for the ranking of these books so number five is going to be Taraji P Henson it's not because this is a bad book it's just that there are better books on this list <laughs> that that's really it I do like Taraji I love her work I love her in Hidden Figures it was my favorite role that she has ever played for me to this day but she's gonna be number five on this list and that's not an insult to her it's just that there are other really top high contenders on this list number four is gonna be Kamala Harris she talks a lot about her work as uh before she came to White House she talks about her upbringing. She also was a sir. She was a sorority, so okay, AKA in the house. Anyway, I really liked his book. I like this book a lot. I feel like I learned a lot about Kamala Harris and I feel like it's very relevant to life today. So Kamala Harris is gonna be number four. Three is gonna be Alicia Keys. So like I said, I did like this book a lot. It was a lot more than I expected know what to expect but I liked it a lot only thing I didn't like was that it was co-authored like I really fell in love with the writing but I'm kind of second guessing of is she writing it somebody else writing it anyway it's a great book it does a really great job of telling her story so Alicia Keys gets number three number two is when we go to Oprah Winfrey with what I know for sure so like I said this is a very easy read but it's a collection of essays that really make you reflect on your own life and coming from Oprah I think it has impact in that she has a lot of similar thoughts that we have in our everyday lives I think it's so crazy Crazy, but also really powerful and if you take a second to read it think about how her, her journal entries relate to your journals or maybe just your thoughts we'll probably start to see that as well so yeah shout out to Oprah for number two number one is me Stacey Abrams the it girl that I just don't feel like she gets enough praise I really loved her book I really did love her book it is one of the few books that is written for minority leaders and entrepreneurs so if that is you you should definitely read it I absolutely love this book. So that is my ranking of these celebrity books. If you guys like this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye.